this module we'll look at news values or what is news. We all have an idea of what news is. What is news to me, us, you, individuals. For one person, Mrs Murphy having a little affair with a neighbour is of more interest than another coup in Thailand. For the next person, it's the other way round. We, each of us, know what kinds of stories interest us. We understand that what interests us is quite likely different to what interests mum or dad. We know that some friends have interests quite different from our own. So we can see that there's something in all of us that gives each an individual unique area of interest. So this creates a problem for the journalist, the newspaper, the radio station or the television news service. To get people to read, watch and listen, how do we meet these widely varied needs and interests? Simply, and we'll discuss this further soon, people's interests have been analysed and a group of interest points developed. We apply this concept to what we write and produce for our particular audience. These interest points have been termed news values. So what is news? The program given in every journalism course for 100 years is a dog bites a man, this is not news, because we can expect the occasional dog to bite a passerby. But a man bites dog, this is news, because it's a very rare occurrence. Therefore, the example of man biting dog has interest to readers. It has news value. But while the man bites the dog story might have news value for a small town newspaper, how would the same story be accepted in the monthly newsletter for the Dremoyne Dog Biters Club? It wouldn't be news at all, because all club members, strange people obviously, make it their daily business to bite a dog. So for that audience, the story does not have any great news value. Even with this rather absurd example, we can see that news values can change with different audiences. They change with cultural perspective, socio-economic perspective, regional perspective, and on and on. So for a story to have interest to a particular audience, it must have news value for that audience. From this discussion, we can see that news values are hard to define. As we've seen, they change from person to person. So as a journalist, publisher or broadcaster, how do we know how to pitch a story at our audience of readers, listeners or viewers? In 1998, a North American academic, Murray Masterson, conducted an international survey and identified the main determining factors that influence the transition of information to news, that is, news values. So Masterson's news values are consequence, and we'll talk more about these in a moment, proximity, conflict, human interest, novelty, and prominence. These news values have been rehashed and reinterpreted by many authors over time, but pretty much hold true. One additional news value often added to the list is timeliness, important today in mainstream media because of the speed of news events unfolding. Now remember that these factors vary with a particular audience. So let's look briefly at Masterton's news values. First of all, consequence. The fact that an earthquake has just occurred in our hometown obviously has immediate consequence. A change in government might mean a change in social services. Consequence. An outbreak of an exotic disease in our region. Consequence. So news values under consequence are the ones that have an immediate impact on our lives, lifestyle, health and so forth. The second news value is proximity. The closer a story to where we live or work increases its news value. A bus crash in Bangladesh killing 12 people, rightly or wrongly, barely moves the news value meter in Australasia. A similar bus crash at the other end of our own country is big news. The same bus crash outside our home city is all-encompassing news, with hourly or more frequent reports and updates, analysis, a continual barrage of expert opinion, updates from hospital wards, and death knocks with grieving family. And we'll be talking more about ethical correctness of this type of reporting elsewhere in this course. So the closer an event is to us, the higher the news value. Proximity. The next value is conflict. 
and conflict can occur at many levels. Two politicians going head-to-head -head in a vicious name-calling debate supplies conflict. A journalist on an aggressive mission against a particular politician or a rip-off merchant delivers conflict. A newspaper running a long campaign against the Prime Minister over a particular issue supplies conflict. And, as newspaper people know only too well, conflict sells newspapers. Human interest. Under this category come stories about ordinary people, but ordinary people usually achieving something, doing something interesting, or down on their luck. Human interest stories are stories about people that our readers, listeners and viewers can identify with. Often, a human interest story is inspirational. The next category is novelty. Unusual or bizarre events always seem to carry a high news value. The calf with two heads, as grossly unfortunate it may be, will always get a pick in the popular magazines. The national pie-eating competition, a meteorite crashing through a roof without hurting anyone. Get the difference between consequence and novelty here? If it hurts someone, it'll be consequence. There's impact. But if it doesn't hurt anyone, it's a novelty story. How subtle the differences are. Any unusual happening will make a novelty story. And the last of Masterton's categories is prominence. These are stories of life and background of national, corporate and regional leaders. And they've always had values as news. But over the past decade or so, we are awash with celebrity stories. Entire magazines and television programs are about celebrities. From the worlds of music, film, sport and entertainment generally. Journalists spend their entire working lives writing about celebrity and the culture of celebrity. These stories come under the news value of prominence. That's a brief explanation of the traditional views of news values.